Uh, welcome to this video. This is on Born Harbour Cycles and was requested by Enoch. And you're more than welcome, Enoch. Right, I'm going to do something a bit different today. I'm going to show you how to make a Born Harbour Cycle of something. And the thing I'm going to pick is aluminium fluoride, okay, which is an ionic solid. Okay, it's very ionic, actually, this one. All right, and um, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to look at a question regarding aluminium fluoride okay and the question is from march 2020 it's paper 42 and i can't remember the question number but i'm sure you can find it all right so first of all i'm going to do some theory and then i'm going to answer the questions this is part one and this is going to be part two all right so part one let's do the um just try and do the born harbor cycle for aluminium fluoride now this is how i would do it i start off with right down here uh what am i going to do aluminium all right aluminium ions sorry not aluminium ions aluminium solid and fluorine gas okay i'm going to draw a line there these come together my lines are awful these are going to come together to form aluminium fluoride which is a solid, okay? Now, <clears throat> how do I get two to become three? I times this by one and a half. Okay, so three seconds or three halves of F2 gives three Fs. Okay, so now it's balanced. And this first line is going to be my formation. That's the formation of aluminium fluoride. Now, my way of doing this, my method, if you like, is I always work on the metal first. And then I work on the non-metal. Okay, so let's work on the metal first. Actually, white is a bit of a weird colour. So I'm going to go up here. First thing I'm going to do to the aluminium is I'm going to vaporise my aluminium. I'm not going to do anything to the fluorine. Okay, after I vaporise, then this is going to be something like the delta H of atomization. All right, now I'm going to take three electrons off of my aluminium all right i'm not going to do anything to the fluorine okay now this stage is three steps in one it is the first ionization energy plus the second ionization energy plus the third ionization energy of aluminium all right Okay, so that's the big step there. Now I've done everything I want with my aluminium, and now I'm going to start doing looking at the um, the fluorine. Yeah. So first of all, I'm going to make it into atoms. So we that we've dealt with this. Okay, and now I'm going to make this three over two into three F gas. Okay, and that is um, the bond energy. All right, I think is that the bond energy? I'll have to think about this, or is it half the bond energy? Let me think about this one in a minute. So what I'm doing is this. I'm thinking about uh, the fluorine now. Fluorine to fluorine gives me two of those, okay? Uh, I don't want this process. I want half of this is going to give me one of those. So I want this process because I want one mole of fluorine atoms okay so this is half the bond energy okay whatever that is half the bond energy and i want three times it because i want three of these in the end okay i hope that makes sense <laughs> i think i made an awful mess of that but you'll tell me if you don't like it in a minute so this is half the bond energy that's what i want but three of them Okay, I hope that makes sense. It's awful, isn't it? All right, now I'm going to give electrons to my fluorine. Okay, as far as I remember, that's exothermic. And there we are, Al3 plus, plus 3 F minus gas. Okay, and this is going to be my delta H electron affinity. It's times three, isn't it? Because, um, because there's three of those. All right, I think I've got everything right so far. And then this last downward thing here is going to be delta H lat. Okay, for aluminium fluoride. Okay, 
Now, there you go. Um, we're done. That's a ball and a half cycle. Now, some of you will have seen that maybe I should have included electrons everywhere. So, for example, from here to here, I should actually also add three electrons. Okay, because it's re really it should be balanced, shouldn't it? I've been a bit lazy there. So, um, I've got three electrons here. I've also got three electrons here. All right. And now, well, the electrons jump over to this and now it balances the electrons disappear here because they jump onto the fluoride ion okay hope that makes sense as well all right so that's my born harbor cycle bit of a mess but there you go and and now uh we've done the first part we've done this part we've made a born harbor cycle for aluminium fluoride all right now let's go to the question and i haven't seen, <laughs> i've seen the question but uh, but i'm not i wasn't following it Okay, so this one, copy this, all right, and I'm going to paste the question here, because the question has the born harbor cycle of aluminium fluoride. Now, did I get it all right? Let's have a look. Okay, whoops, there we are. Move that down a tiny bit. All right, so, yeah, let's go through it bit by bit. Yeah, we got this bit, right? We did say, we, and we remember we called this the formation. Then we vaporized, we got that. They put 1.5, I got 3 over 2, same thing. Um, what did we do there? Then we changed that into that, yeah. Okay, they haven't put the, oh no, then they've, they haven't done it quite the same way, have they? Because here they vaporized by aluminium, and here they've done the bond energy. Okay, and then they've done, this is the ionization bit, isn't it? I didn't quite do that the same order, but it doesn't matter. That's fine. This one, yeah, we did that. We got that right. That's the electron affinity. And that's the lattice energies. I think we're pretty good. Yeah. If you don't understand again, just give me a shout. I know the exam is tomorrow, um, but let's see if we can get things done. All right. So let's have a look at the question itself. Okay, now we've got to... Got to this label delta H4 and delta H6. Whoopsie daisy, which one was delta H4? Delta H4 is the electron affinity of fluorine, isn't it? Now I'm going to cheat and I'm going to look at the answers because I don't want to get anything wrong. All right, uh, very foolish. <laughs> Always check the answer scheme. All right, even though I'm pretty sure I'm right. Okay, it might just be put differently. That's the only reason I'm doing this, really. Oh gosh, it's taking forever. Uh, where are we? Not that one. It's quite, I should have put the number in, shouldn't I? The question number in. Okay, let's try and find out the question number. And it's question number, of course, it's miles away. It's question number, God, the long question. I'm right at the bottom of it. Question three. Okay, and obviously I've gone by it. It's right at the bottom of question three, this. Yeah, didn't see that. All right, so it's first order. Oh, yeah. So, as we know, delta H4 is the electron affinity, which is what the answer scheme says. It is the electron affinity for or of, I should say, of fluorine. Okay, now it's obviously three times it, isn't it? Now, this is in brackets in the mark scheme, so it's, you don't have to say that, but there you go. And delta H6, that's the um, heat of formation, isn't it? That's the enthalpy change of formation. This one here. Formation of ALF3. Okay, all right, we're good there. Now, calculate, uh, use the data in the table and the data from the data booklet to calculate the energy, uh, the lattice energy of ALF. Okay, now, I'm going to use their one because my one's all right, but their one I think is a bit nicer. Now, very simply, <clears throat> if I start here and I go from there all the way around back to where I started from Hess's law, that must equal zero, okay? Simple as that, because if you start and end at the same place, you've done nothing. So from Hess's law, that is equal to zero, isn't it? All right, but I'm going to start off from here, and I'm going to go down to there, okay? So I'm, that changes delta H lat, okay? Equals, right, from here, let me do it a different color, from here to here, in other words, this, 
must equal, let me get a nice weird color pen, pinky one, must equal from here to here. It must do. It must do, because if everything added together is zero, that must make sense, okay? In other words, let's do it another way, because if anyone's confused, if I add all of these terms together, okay, let's go. Delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3 plus delta H4. I'm going from here, going up there, down here, plus delta H5. Okay, and that will be the hit and go back up to the original. Now I'm going against this one, aren't I? So minus delta H6, all of that, added everything together, must equal zero. Okay, it must do, because if you start off at one place and end up at the same place, it must be zero. So let's, which ones do we want? Well, I want delta H5, don't I? So I'm simply going to put everything over the other side. I'm going to make delta H5 my uh, subject to the formula, and everything else goes in the other side. So delta H6 goes from negative to positive, and everything else minus delta H1, minus delta H2, minus delta H3, minus delta H4. All right, all of this stuff, that must be true, because all I've done is I've put, the, put it over the other side of the thing. So you could think of it as delta H lat is equal to delta H formation minus everything else. That's a quick way of doing it. All right. So let's put these numbers in and see if we get the answer. Let's move this up a tiny bit. Oops. For some reason, my computer keeps doing weird stuff today. All right. So I want delta H6. So where's the heat of formation? Um, uh, here it is. This is the enthalpy change of formation, isn't it? So delta H, let's use a different pen. Delta H lat is equal to delta H of formation, which is minus 1504. There's that. So we dealt with this bit or this bit. Minus delta H1. Now delta H1 is the, uh, what are we doing? We're changing aluminium to aluminium gas. Aluminium solid to aluminium gas, so that's 362, sorry, 326, minus, so we've dealt with delta H1, delta H2 is what have we done here? We've done three times, well, it's the bond energy, isn't it? Uh, the bond energy of this, of the fluorine, remember, this is the bond energy, but we don't want that, we want half of that. So this is the one we've got to look up our bond energy. And I'm going to cheat. I'm going to look at the mark scheme, even though it's not very clear. Uh, 158. It says this is 158. And if you remember, I want three of them. Okay, so that's 3158. Okay, this is from the data book. Look. Data book. Now what do I want? I've dealt with delta H2, yeah. Delta H3, let's have a look at their picture. What is delta H3? Delta H3 is the addition of the first, the second, and the third ionization energy. So minus there. This number here is all three added up. Okay. For some reason or other, they don't want us to look at those. They want us to just do this, put all three in one. One, three, uh, sorry, five, one, three, seven. Okay, we dealt with that. Delta H4 is the electron affinity. There, this is the electron affinity. Okay, so we take that away as well. Minus. Now, if you remember, there's three of them because there's three fluorines, three electron affinities, and this one is the electron affinity. You can't see it with my pen. And that's minus three, two, eight. Okay, well, now the trick is honestly, the trick is getting everything right. These are so easy to get wrong. Okay, so let me do this. My oopsie daisy. I'm using the computer. My one five oh four uh, minus three two six minus three times one five eight 
minus five one three seven plus three times three two eight and I get minus six four five seven kilojoules per mole this is lattice energy now I'm looking at the thing and according to this I've got something wrong all right which is a, I, honestly there's always something wrong with these the answer in the book is minus six six two two zero now i'm guessing i've just been using my computer to do this and the computer calculator is awful so let's see where i went wrong i'm going to get their value and my value and see where the two differ so i'm going to put six two two zero in the machine minus i'm going to take mine six four five seven away and i instantly two three seven how have i missed out a two three seven two three seven what did i get wrong that's two three seven two three seven where did i go wrong hmm interesting i can't see where a two three seven comes in but the difference between these two is two three seven and i don't know why this is from the mark scheme and this is from me but this number looks familiar so i don't know i think i've done something wrong but i can't see what i've done wrong okay maybe i put the numbers in wrong 137, 158, I don't know. Anyway, um, oh, I didn't, did I use the, um, did I use the formation data? I did, didn't I? All right, so, uh, I don't know. don't know where I've gone wrong. All right, but uh, I'll try and figure it out later. All right, but I think, uh, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it's not a big deal where I've gone wrong. All right, now let's go to the next bit. Okay. Uh, I'll try and figure that in a minute. Maybe I'll stop the video and uh, and see. So the last bit of the thing is this. Oopsie daisy. Okay, grab that. Okay, use the data from the data book to suggest how the lattice energy of aluminium fluoride compares with scandium fluoride. Now, the bit that you're looking at here is they both look very similar, don't they? Scandium. And aluminium they're both three plus so it's not that is it it's not the size uh, sorry it's not the charge on the iron it must be the size and the aluminium iron is going to be much much smaller okay so in other words this is the aluminium fluoride aluminium fluoride aluminium fluoride the lattice would look something like this but the scandium would look like something like this scandium fluoride scandium fluoride scandium fluoride so the closeness the ions in aluminium chloride can get much closer together than they can in scandium chloride all right so because the radius of the al3 plus is much smaller than the radius of the scandium 3 plus the ions can get closer together Okay, if the ions can get closer together, um, the electrostatic forces, electrostatic forces will be greater. Okay, and therefore um, the lattice will be harder to break apart. Okay. <clears throat> and so the lattice energy will be greater. Let me pause the video, all right, if I can remember how to, and then uh, I'll see where I went wrong. Aha, uh -huh, I figured out where I've gone wrong. Very silly of me. Um, it's because I was rushing, which you mustn't do. So this is the data book value of the bond energy, and I want half of that, don't I? It's half times 158. Okay, so that's what I want. All right, not the bond energy. I want half of the bond energy. So this, it's three of these I need. So it's three, and that's 0.5 times this number. Okay, and that was just bad of me, but there's always something that goes wrong in these things. Hope you understand what I've done wrong, which is a good thing, showing you that I've messed up the uh, the, the bond energy. 
and I wanted half the bond energy and I wanted three times half the bond energy. If I put this in, I get this. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I uh, hope that was um, kind of informative and give me a shout if you want the help on anything involving this video. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.